Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a story of a man who found out his wife has been cheating on him with six different guys, and this is what he finally did. Here's the full story with three updates. Married to my wife Betty for six years, I travel for work several times a year for training and support. Never had any reason to suspect her of cheating till last year, then I started seeing signs like her being out more, buying new clothes, and being overly protective of her phone. When I would ask her questions she would give me vague and evasive answers. Also, our sex life wasn't as good as it used to be. I had a couple of conversations with her and she assured me we were fine and that she was just focusing on improving herself. Still not satisfied. I cloned her iPhone to my iPad and I was able to read her texts and emails, including a bunch she had tried to delete. It was so much worse than I thought. She was talking with several guys and had slept with most of them. I took screenshots of everything including pictures they had traded. She was meeting them at our house when I was out of town on business. I spent a whole day at work just rereading everything and trying to make sense of it. I had another trip planned that month and all I could think about was what was going to happen while I was gone. The next day I made a plan to confront her but I wanted more evidence so she couldn't deny it and say I was delusional. So I rigged up two IP cameras, one in the living room and another in our bedroom, and hooked them to my NIS box. When I got back from my trip I had more than I bargained for, she had two different guys over while I was gone, and what really floored me was seeing her enjoying acts with them that she never would do with me. I did a deep dive and found out all the personal info on the guys she was talking to. Both of the guys on the video are married. One is even a deacon at our church. I had another trip a week later and got more videos with a third guy. I was home for about three weeks straight and kept a close watch on her, volunteering to go on errands with her and such. Then I told her I had to go to Phoenix on short notice but I would only be gone two to three nights. Sure enough, she set up a date while I was gone. So I faked a trip to the airport and checked into a local hotel with the plan of showing up at the house 20 minutes before her date was supposed to show up. I got to the house and let myself in and found her getting ready, she was shocked to say the least. I showed her the videos and said I knew everything and we were done. She pleaded with me to stay and work things out. She promised to change and said how ashamed she was. I told her she would have to cut all contact with the guys she had hooked up with and if anything like this ever happened again I would be out the door. I said she needed to make a list of who she slept with and when. If she wasn't completely honest I would know and we were done. We also had to go to couples counseling as well to get to the root of why she cheated. In the meantime, I contacted her three affair partners in person and showed each of them a short video clip featuring them. I said they needed to block all contact with my wife, even so much as a text or call and I would find out and send those clips and text messages to their families, friends, and co-workers. We did the therapy and things were better for almost a year. One thing I never told her was how I found out and that I could still read her texts and emails. Trust but verify, she started a conversation with a guy, trading bears and digital flirting, falling back into her old habits. I set up another fake trip and she set up another date at our house. This time I waited down the street in a rental car and watched the guy walk into my house. I walked in on them in the bedroom with my cell phone recording. I started cursing and yelling at the top of my lungs, it scared both of them and they jumped up. She was crying and he was trying to get his pants back on. He ran out and I went in to confront my wife. I told her we were done and she needed to leave. She pleaded with me and promised to make it up to me. I said she had 48 hours to confess to her parents and friends how she threw away our marriage before I started sending out her video highlight reels to everyone. I tracked her new AP down and sent their text messages and the cell phone footage to his wife. Betty, soon to be ex-wife, has called me several times. She is in panic mode. Her new AP has told her about his wife getting my email package and Betty is begging for mercy and for me to stop. At this point, I just want to sit back and watch the world burn. I showed my evidence to my best friend and his wife. He said to move on but his wife is siding with my darker side. She said to expose all her partners and go scorched earth. I'm torn right now as I realize I'm still in pain and just want to lash out so I might not be making wise decisions. The one thing I do know is I don't want her to spin this breakup into being my fault. Tuesday morning I got a call at work from Betty and she is in shock. She just got served the divorce papers, kudos to my lawyer for expediting that. She says she understands but wants to talk things out. I have spent the last couple of days in a hotel but I told her we could talk when I came home. She said it felt like her life was coming apart at the seams. She got a call from our pastor's wife saying it would be best if she resigned from the committee she was on at our church. Three out of four of her APs have contacted her about having their lives blown up. 
Two are confused because they followed my suggestions they cut all contact with her in exchange for my silence. Her best friend called her crying because she and her husband were fighting after I talked to them the other night. I asked if she had told her family or any of our friends yet and she said just a few. I said I would be reaching out to them soon to let them know if she hadn't. She swears she still loves me and wants to stay with me. I told her I should have left her when I found out she cheated the first time. I told her I had copies and read every email and text she had sent or received for the last three years along with her Snapchat, so I knew everything. All the conversations and all the trading of pictures and videos, even the ones she thought she had deleted. I said there is no way I could trust you and without trust, there could be no future or love. The only thing left for us to do together is divorce and go our separate ways. I made my wife write out a timeline of who and when she cheated on me, turns out there were six guys, three of whom she only saw once or twice. The first guy she hooked up with was one I got on tape. I sent out info to all the wives this morning and I got a call back from one of them within minutes. She asked a lot of questions and said she had suspected him before but just never could prove it. She thanked me for giving her what she needed. The newest AP was removed from his house and charged with domestic battery. He called me to give me a piece of his mind and made a few threats. Even with everything that's happened, your soon-to-be ex-wife is still looking out for her AP. No, when she wanted me to stop and asked for mercy, it was for herself. She realized I was going to do what I told her I would do and she didn't want her friends and family to see all the evidence. Her AP was already burned and kicked out of his house. I never forgave her partners the first time. I did believe her when she said she was willing to do whatever it took to fix her mistake. She told me she thought I wouldn't respect her if we did the things she did with her APs, and after going to therapy she shed that fear, and our sex life was off the charts. In reality, I was love and sex bombed until she got the itch to cheat again, but I never let my guard down and caught her when she did try to cheat again. I told her before there would be no third chance and there is nothing that will change my mind now. All the AP's wives have been informed already, along with other people associated with them, including a few key members of our church. Betty's 48 hours has passed and I will start trickling out the truth to our friends and family. I saw her best friend out last night and confronted her about why she didn't say anything to me about Betty's affairs to me, which she denied any knowledge of, and I asked her husband if he knew which he also denied. So I sent the email chain between Betty and her friend to the husband where his wife was envious and supportive of Betty's cheating. My wife is not very tech savvy, so when she got a new phone last year she had me set it up. So I had her Apple ID and password. It was simple enough to wipe my iPad and restore from her iCloud account and then to sync her texts, emails, and a few other apps to iCloud on both devices and what she saw, I saw. My descriptions of the events for the past two years. Text messages, quite a few. Bare selfies she sent out, very crappy. The timeline of her affairs she wrote out when we reconciled the first time. Snapchats I was able to save. All four videos of her and her APs. The last video and a couple of selfies were included in the open text as well as in the Dropbox. Plus I included my permission for any of my friends to get a piece of that. And a warning to the wives that Betty preferred married men. A similar text and email was sent to her family members. I had spent a couple of nights in a hotel after confronting her but I came back to our house about the time the texts went out. Didn't take long before both our phones were blowing up. Betty was screaming at me for airing our dirty laundry to the world and my only answer to her was what part of it wasn't true. She has since moved to either her sisters or back home with her parents. Fallout, her AP who was a deacon at our church has left the congregation. Our pastor's wife suggested that Betty resign from the church committee she was on. Three out of four of her APs are facing divorce, the other is stuck in purgatory. Her best friend and her husband are separated due to the fact he now knows she was enabling the affairs and kept it secret from even him. I had a few negative responses, including one from Betty's sister, but the majority of them were offering condolences and support. I have a snake of an attorney and he is in complete charge now and I have blocked all contact with her. One of the last messages I sent to Betty and her sister was actions have consequences. My attorney wasn't happy when I told him about the videos earlier this week. He said the APs might be the only thing to worry about, as far as my wife he said that can be handled. If it comes to that, he said he could argue that they were home security cameras. Either way, he said not to worry too much about it, he has dealt with this before. 
I did not send graphic pictures to anyone at my church with the exception of one of our friends that goes there and the deacon's wife. I did send text messages and her timeline of the affair to a few church members including my pastor's wife. I felt since she was on the committee with my wife she should know as well. I know the deacon's wife shared some pictures with a few people, possibly the pastor's wife and a couple of others. But that is still my church. True. I have no desire to waste any more of my life with my future ex-wife. She destroyed my life not once but twice and lied to my face for at least two years. All I did was shine a bright light on her infidelity. I made nothing up nor exaggerated any fact. The only one guilty of destroying her life is her. I wasn't going to let her spin our divorce as something that was my fault. You accessed her email and sent this from her account. Yes, when I first thought she was cheating I synced her iPhone to one of my iPads and I was able to read her texts, emails, and most of her Snapchats. I made copies of everything to confront her and when she started cheating again after we had reconciled I used her accounts to send out all the evidence. As far as letting this go I am done, just waiting on the divorce and closing this chapter of my life. There used to be a time in the world when marriage vows meant something and married couples were faithful to each other. Making everything public means controlling the narrative about the reasons for the divorce and keeping my wife from spinning it into me being the bad guy here. There was a time when I did love her but the pain she inflicted negated that feeling. I didn't make up or exaggerate any of the details I spread. So if she is humiliated by everyone knowing the decisions she made, maybe she should have made better decisions. As far as telling the other people who were cheated on they deserve to know the truth, and that their health could be at risk or that their partner was sleeping with a tramp. So I am dealing with my house as I see fit and I am informing those parties that I want to know the truth. I never sent the info I have to any minor nor are there any kids involved in this debacle. She is the one that threw away the last six years of our life and hurt me not once but twice. So why should she get to walk away from this without sharing some of the pain and responsibility for her actions? Without proof, my ex-wife could have denied it and said I was making it all up. The video evidence I sent was undeniably her with someone other than me. There was some negative feedback. Some of it came from her friends who already knew she was cheating. One of the AP blamed me for ruining his marriage. Her sister, who knew, said it devastated her parents but I sent the same reply to all of them. Think how I felt when I first saw the videos. I did get an apology from the ex-deacon from our church saying how sorry he was and what he did was wrong. His wife decided not to divorce him due to their three children but did make him quit his job and they moved to another city. OP, she received a caution and was granted a second opportunity, a privilege seldom extended to most deceivers. Every single one of them reaped the consequences they earned. I regret that you've had to endure this situation on two occasions. You did not merit this. The only point I'll emphasize is that it speaks volumes about your character because you attempted to pardon and forget, a feat not easily achieved by many individuals. Do not allow anyone to induce feelings of remorse or guilt within you, as none was ever directed toward your emotions. She received the consequences she earned, and now you can embark on the healing process and proceed with the separation. I understand it still stings, but you've taken the correct course of action, and things will improve. Good luck and stay strong. I, 33 male, living in India and recently got engaged to a girl. 31 female, in my community, arranged marriage. I'm a person who is selfless and clear about my needs. After getting engaged, I started feeling disconnected a lot of times with her but my initial thought was that maybe I need to give more time and be understanding of her needs. This went on for almost 6 months and then one night she went out to party and I asked her to call me back once she reaches home safely. She didn't do it and I was not happy about it and told her that even after repeatedly asking you specially, why did you not do it? For this she didn't have any answer and chose to ignore me for the next three days. No call, no message, nothing. At that time I realized that I'm not a priority for her and she is taking this relationship for granted. I went to her and confronted her about it, at which point she turned it around on me and made me feel if it was entirely my fault to have even asked her. After this incident, I sensed that something is off and started digging in. What I found was shocking beyond my wildest expectation. She was having an affair with her ex-boss, who is married, from the past 1.5 years. This affair was an ongoing thing and she had no intention of calling it off. Even at this point, I gave her a chance to come clean and ask her to be open and honest about her past relationships, long-term, fling, short-term, etc. She did tell me about her past relationships but not about this guy. When I confronted her and asked who is this guy and what the hell is going on, her tone changed drastically and she was shocked as to how I found it out. 
She told me that this has been ongoing for some time and she didn't think anything on how it could impact our future. And she had no intention of telling me about this ever. I felt horrible and told her how this has hurt me and we can't obviously move forward to get married. She pleaded me to give her one chance and as a fool I gave 14 days to her. During that time also I repeatedly asked her to end the affair and prove it to me, which she didn't. At last I told her brother about all of it and called off everything. I'm amazed at how low we as humans have gotten to in terms of moral fiber and people are ready to let go of long-term commitments for short-term pleasure. OP. It's conceivable that her brother and the rest of her family were aware of this affair in advance. They might have refrained from disclosing it to you to avoid jeopardizing the situation, perhaps even feigning surprise when you brought it to their attention. You should also consider notifying the OBS about the affair. You've taken the correct steps by terminating the engagement and informing her family. With any luck, you'll now have the opportunity to connect with someone deserving of your trust and loyalty. Maintain no contact and continue moving forward. Good luck and stay strong. I really need support or advice about this because we are at the brink of a breakup. I'll go through why, but this is essentially my breaking point. Two-year relationship, talked about marriage, kids, lifelong loving etc. Good relationship, and definitely love each other. Have not been the best boyfriend the last few months. Haven't made her feel loved or cherished, and I admit that. I had to deal with a pretty solid crapping off addiction, and now I actually have the space and energy to go. Had a massive switch go off in my head about how I should change these things and I have been working on it. This is connected to why I think this is happening. GF all of a sudden starts talking to a colleague more three months ago. He's 10 plus years older and has a wife and child. They seem very happy. And the guy is a good guy. I believe this is completely one way. All of a sudden, they are messaging non-stop for hours. Paragraphs and paragraphs of messages for four hours at a time. They are so invested in talking that the messages are read as soon as they are sent. I don't care about her talking to guys, she has plenty of guy friends, but this was odd. I mentioned that this was a bit weird, and of course I got the he's married. We're just good friends. He gets me. But she relented and agreed it was too much and slowed it down. For probably a day. She would then start to hide her phone when talking to him. And this process would repeat four-fifth times in which we would argue about it, and it would turn into an everything argument. On her birthday, I treated her to a lunch that cost around 300 pounds, a lot of money for me, and she had booked a piercing close to the time, so she had to leave early, something I planned for a month. Later that day we were meeting her friends and that guy for beer and wings. Bearing in mind I've spoke about this guy at length multiple times, she chose to get up from her seat and sit next to him and talk to him the whole night, literally completely turning their bodies toward each other the whole night until she realized. We had a massive argument that night, the worst we ever had. And we had a talk two days later about breaking up. Now, we both love each other, and I've accepted what I need to do for it to work. I had already started taking the steps, just hadn't explained it to her. I like to show and do the things rather than say it first. But in this scenario, she doesn't think she has things to work on. I've told her that I think the best thing for the relationship is for her to stop talking to him, which she doesn't want to do. I believe they can be friends, but they have to put boundaries in, which I don't think she's able to do honestly. We decided that I'm going to move out for a few months, which both us had suggested and is a very mutual decision. But with me not being there, I think there's only going to be more messages. I've explained and asked her to read up on emotional affairs, and she thinks she understands where I'm coming from, but she genuinely and I believe this doesn't think anything is wrong with this. Doesn't help she has a friend agreeing with her, but they don't know how much and often they talk. And the fact she hides it from me and still does it, did it today. We both have deal breakers in the next couple months, but I honestly I'm at my wits end and feel like I'm being ganged up on by her, her friends and her parents when that don't know the extent of it. I'm probably just going to ramble here, but any thoughts, please. And please not bro just dump her. I 100% know it's an emotional affair, in an early stage, and she has no idea. Clarifying, not having a break, just moving out. There are reasons for this, and we both came up with idea. We essentially had building works in the flat and it was too much. Saw each other 24-7, and it got a bit much. I want to move out to get some space, and a less codependent routine. Appreciate everyone's input. Thank you. Had another argument tonight and I told her, this friendship or our relationship. Went into a massive argument of course, and no one wants to be that guy. But 100% had to put the foot down. Think she knew it was coming. Since it was an argument I've given her the chance to think, talk it out. 
Either way I'll know, and I know after hearing from you guys that I'm not crazy. Thank you. If there isn't a complete drop of contact, the relationship will be over and already seeing the upside. So two weeks after moving out, I said to her that she has to stop speaking to this, has to be a clear cut. Now this turned into an argument of course, and I said take some time, but know that we can't work on this relationship if there's contact. A boundary I won't budge on, I say to her on the phone. Two weeks is far too much time and it should have been done and decided. So we have broke up. Best decision, absolutely. The mad thing is, she was expecting to keep the friendship and date me, as I prove myself or fight for the relationship. That crap blew my mind. Thanks everyone, hope you guys are good. We broke up via phone last Friday. I had said to her she had to stop speaking, being friends with the guy, a clean cut, and she essentially refused. She said I'm not choosing him, I don't want to be with someone who puts me in this position. So she chose this friendship over me which has kind of took the sting out of the breakup for me. I don't want to be with someone who doesn't want to give up a 3 month friendship over a relationship. Some self respect has been massive here. What blew my mind is that she thought that we would still be dating and I would have to prove myself and fight for her affection and attention, and pull it from this married man. This was insane. I really feel that she's oblivious to her position in life and her odds on having the partner, family she wants. I feel really sad for her, not enough to change my wants or anything. The relationship is over, but man she done goofed. Called her last night to sort out logistics, money, storage etc. And she already apologized for how one of her friends came across, gave her awful advice. I think at the minute, she really regrets everything. Just waiting for the anger, rage and spite to come through though. Thanks everyone for your help. OP, you've made the correct decision. She's currently in a state of confusion, and clarity will come in due course. When the situation unravels and she returns seeking reconciliation, ensure you don't simply accept her back. Focus on living your most fulfilling life, and when it comes to her, conceal any signs of distress. This is the ultimate retaliation and will undoubtedly unsettle her. Move forward. Maintain no contact with her. You have a substantial life ahead of you. Good luck and stay strong. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like my videos then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.